Hey guys, Pro1701 here, and today on It's Armageddon, the question I pose to you is, what if Armageddon was happening, it's the end of the world, and you could only save one story from each season of Classic Who? For some reason, as you're grabbing everything, you can only grab one story from each Classic Doctor Who season. It's kind of weird how that would work, because you figured you'd just be grabbing box sets, but it's, it's my video, I can do what I want, and that's what we're doing. Um... For me, season one, it would be The Reign of Terror. I know a lot of people might be tempted to do An Unearthly Child just for the first episode, or The Daleks, because it's the first one with The Daleks. But I feel like you could establish The Daleks later, and I love Reign of Terror. I think Reign of Terror is one of the best historicals. I really enjoy it every time I watch it. I think the animated episodes are done really well and fit in really well. Um... <clears throat> and that episode one cliffhanger with the building burning is just phenomenal. I always enjoy it. I think Hartnell's great in it. I love how uh, he just assumes authority whenever he has to. He doesn't let anybody get a word in edgewise. I just I love that. I absolutely love that. Uh, season two, I'm going to say the Dalek invasion of Earth. This is a great chance for us to introduce the Daleks. It's also Susan's departure. Uh, and that's done really well. And, and plus Hartnell has a lot of really good scenes in that in the episodes he's actually in. <clears throat> it's not my favorite of the season so far. That's probably Planet of the Giants. I love Planet of the Giants. But I do feel like Dalek Invasion of Earth is more essential. And I still think it's a great story overall. Just a tad longer than it needed to be. It only needed to be four or five parts. Episode four really drags. Uh, but other than that, it's definitely the one I would pick there. Season three, I haven't seen enough of to be sure. I'm going to say The Ark. Although I... I'm tempted to say The War Machines, because The War Machines does strike me as technically more essential, and it is a good story in its own right. And it's a great introduction to Ben and Polly, their only completely surviving story. <laughs> but I love The Ark, and I think The Ark uh, is a good story objectively as well. I love the monoloid, or whatever they're called. I like their design. I think that's actually a really impressive design for the time. Works really well in black and white. I love the twist in the story, and I love that it comes halfway through the story and not toward the end of the story. The episode two cliffhanger, I think, is one of the best cliffhangers in all of Doctor Who. I really like it. Uh, and really, you could take the first half of the story and the second half of the story, and they could be separate stories. Like, you could add the first two episodes as the arc and the last two episodes as Return to the Ark. And you could add a different Doctor Who story in between them. That would have worked just fine. I really like that aspect of it. So uh, I would say the arc from what I've seen so far. Season 4, it's got to be Power of the Daleks. I know a lot of people might say 10th Planet. I understand the argument there, but I love Power of the Daleks. Not only is it a great post-regeneration story, it's also a great Dalek story. It does a really good job showcasing all of the guest actors. Watching Lesterson's arc over the course of the story is fantastic. Excellent writing. And so it not, not only is it a good post-regeneration story and a good Dalek story, but it's also just a good story in general. I love it. The animation is pretty good, especially the special edition. I really enjoy the special edition of it. Uh, and it's a story that remembers the Daleks are geniuses. They're highly intelligent. And it also shows just how shrewd and manipulative they can be. And I love some of the stuff like, Why do humans kill other humans? Like, that's foreign to a Dalek, kind of showing in a way that we might even be worse than the Daleks, because the Daleks at least work together, at least in this story. They're not attacking each other like the humans are, kind of implying we're worse than the Daleks. It's interesting the way the Dalek asked that question. Um, <clears throat> I, I enjoyed that. There's just so many good things going on in this story, and I'm guessing it's a David Whitaker story, if I remember correctly, and man, did he really just get the Daleks, I think. Uh, season 5, I would probably say Tomb of the Cybermen. It's not my favorite of the season, but it is really good. It's complete. It would, it's nice to have a complete Troughton. <clears throat> it has a lot of iconic scenes. It has a lot of iconic imagery in it, and it is a really good story. Uh, so I would probably go Tomb of the Cybermen for that. Season 6, it has to be War Games. As much as I love a lot of the other stories, the invasion is phenomenal and a strong contender. The Mind Robber is phenomenal and a strong contender, but I think you have to have War Games. I think you do. I think it's just essential viewing. Just for episode 10 alone, I like the whole story. I love the first nine episodes as well, especially the cliffhanger to episode 9, when it shows them all running in slow motion. That one shot of them is one of my favorite shots in all of Doctor Who, when you just see them running down the mountainside. I love that shot. 
I love the Time Lords being that powerful that they can just slow down time on a whim like that. That's the Time Lords I want to see more of. I love those Time Lords. They're like gods, and I love it. That's a heck of a cliffhanger. And then Episode 10, of course, is just amazing. One of the best episodes Doctor Who has ever put out. Um, season 7 gets trickier because I'm not sure whether to pick between Spearhead and Inferno. Spearhead could be a little more essential, but I think Inferno is better. I would probably say Inferno, <laughs> although if I accidentally grabbed Spearhead, I'd be fine. But I love Inferno. It's one of my favorite Doctor Who stories. I think objectively it's amazing. It, It's the only like seven parter I've ever seen or longer where there's no padding. Everything feels paced perfectly. It fills out its seven episodes perfectly. And I love that. And there's so much going on in it. And the actors who are getting to play dual roles in it do such a good job with both characters that I really like it. Nicholas Courtney is hamming it up a little bit as he does sometimes. But uh, you can tell he's having so much fun playing the brigade leader that I'm willing to let it go because he's so much fun to watch. Um, season 8... I'm going to go with Terror of the Autons, mainly for the Master. It's not my favorite of the, of the season. That's Mind of Evil. I love Mind of Evil. But Terror of the Autons is a fantastic story. And since we don't have Spearhead, we took Inferno. It's nice to have an Auton story. It's a great introduction to the Master. The Master's opening scene alone is magnificent, and I love it. And it's nice um, just seeing how calculating and cold and Moriarty-like this Master is. And I, I just enjoy when him and the Doctor confront each other in the story. It, it's, it's a really, really good story. Season 9, special edition of Day of the Daleks. Got to be. I love that one. Of all the special editions we've had so far, that is my favorite. It is the one that really bumps up the story the most for me and makes the execution of the story live up to the actual script of the story. <clears throat> and I, I'm all for that. And don't get me wrong, I like Curse of Peladon and I love the Sea Devils, but I've got to have that special edition of Day of the Daleks. It's always a fun rewatch for me when I go back to watch it. And I always watch the special edition. I can't watch the regular edition anymore. Special edition wins for the new Dalek voices alone. Um, season 10 is a little trickier because there's so many good ones. Uh, it's almost a three-way tie between Carnival of Monsters, Three Doctors, and The Green Death because they're all amazing. I would probably say... The Three Doctors, it's my favorite multi-doctor story. It's probably my second or third favorite Pertwee story. Plus, I get more Hartnell and more Troughton. And Troughton, of course, steals the show, as Troughton tends to do. And just watching the Third Doctor and Second Doctor interact with each other is always a treat. I always love it. Uh, it's just it's a lot of fun, and I really enjoy it. Uh, season 11, I've only seen Death to the Daleks and Planet of the Spiders. And while I think I prefer Death to the Daleks slightly more, I'd probably say Planet of the Spiders just for its significance being Pertwee's final story, and there's so much going on with it. And he gets to go by land, by air, and by sea in it. Got a one last hurrah, which I like. Um, so I enjoy that. I would probably go Planet of the Spiders. <coughs> Season 12, Genesis. It has to be Genesis. I mean... Genesis isn't even my favorite of the season because you guys know I have a strong love for Robot. I do. Completely subjective, strong love for Robot. I really love the Ark in Space. I enjoy Revenge of the Cybermen. But it, it has to be Genesis. Whatever season Genesis is in, it's, it's got to be Genesis. You have to have Genesis. It's, it's so iconic for a reason. So definitely Genesis. Season 13 is the hardest one to choose from because my answer is basically anything besides the Android Invasion, which is still good. And maybe Terror of the Zygons because that one's also good but not quite as masterclass as the others. But if I reached in and grabbed, you know, Planet of Evil, uh, Brain of Morbius, Pyramids of Mars, or Seeds of Doom, I'd be happy either way because all four of those stories are just amazing. It would probably come be down between Pyramids of Mars and Seeds of Doom because both stories are amazing. I love them both. Um, I haven't actually watched Pyramids of Mars in a long time, though. Probably about at least a decade, I'd say. It's the only Season 13 story I don't own. I'm looking forward to that season 13 box set whenever we eventually get it. I'm worried they're saving it for last. Uh, you know, start with 12, end with 13. I can see them doing that. It's the only one I don't own on DVD from season 13. I have all of the others. Um, and so I haven't got to rewatch it. It's a little hazy in my memory, but I remember I love it. It's I absolutely love it. It has some very iconic scenes in it as well. And while I love Seeds of Doom as well, between the two, it's, it's, it's almost a toss-up, but I would probably say Pyramids of Mars. Uh, season 14, got to be Talons. Some great stories that season, some truly great stories. I find, and most of you know, I find Face of Evil vastly underrated and Robots of Death a bit overrated while still being great, but it's got to be Talons. I absolutely adore Talons. Season 15 has to be Horror of Fame Rock. 
If I picked anything else, Ham would send a hitman after me, rightfully so. Horror of Fang Rock is such a standout for the season, such an amazing horror story, and it never gets old. I could re I rewatched it a few months ago. I could rewatch it right now if I owned it on DVD. It's amazing. Uh, season 16 is a little trickier because <coughs> it's hard for me to pick between Ryboss Operation and Pirate Planet. I love both. Between the two, I would probably say Pirate Planet, but if I grabbed Ryboss Operation by mistake, I'd be content with that because they're both fantastic stories. But Pirate Planet just has that Douglas Adam humor that I love to death. And him, Douglas Adams and the Fourth Doctor just click. They really fit like two pieces of a puzzle snapping together perfectly. Um, so anytime they're together, I tend to enjoy it. Season 17, City of Death, goes without saying, has to be City of Death. I like all of the stories in Season 17. I like Season 17. It's a vastly underrated season. But City of Death is easily the tent pole of the season, and it is just a phenomenal story in general. Season 18, State of Decay. I'd be tempted to say Legopolis, but I'll circle back to that. But I am going to go with State of Decay. Most of you guys know that for me, that's my masterpiece of Season 18. You know, anytime when, if, you know, if I run into somebody that tries to tell me Modern Series 11 is better than Classic Season 18, my argument is Modern Series 11 has no masterpieces in it. Classic Season 18 has a masterpiece in it, and that masterpiece is State of Decay. Although I know some people would argue Warrior's Gate is a masterpiece, and I'm willing to accept that. I don't quite agree. It is amazing. I don't know if i call it a masterpiece. But anyone else who thinks that, I'm definitely willing to let it stand. Um, season 19, Castrovalva. And this is why I might have considered Legopolis for Season 18, because Legopolis does flow right into Castrovalva, and at least then you would have both of those stories. You know, you would have Legopolis, you know, as Keeper, Legopolis, and Castrovalva pretty much work as a trilogy, you would have the last two parts of that trilogy. You would have Tom's final story and Peter's first story, and they go together really well. I just, I love Castrovalva. It's my favorite Peter Davison story. Uh, not necessarily objectively his best. That is probably the case, honestly. But uh, it is my personal favorite. I think it's a lot of fun. It does a lot of neat things I like. I love a lot of the ideas going on in it. I love the, the actual mystery behind Castrovalva. It fascinates me. I love the fact that I did not pick out who Anthony Ainley was until his reveal at the end. I didn't see that. The makeup worked so well. I remember the first time I saw that just being like, huh. Um, so that, that it, it definitely gets a plus for me for that. It's just a really good story. <clears throat> uh, season 20. Season 20. Uh, for Season 20, I'm going to say Five Doctors. I, I know it's not technically part of Season 20, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be on the Season 20 box set, let's be honest. So I'm going to say The Five Doctors because I do enjoy The Five Doctors a lot. It's another one of my favorite multi-doctor stories, and it is really, really good. Again, Trouton steals the show. But I think Richard Herndl does a really good job as the first Doctor, too. I actually really like his performance as the first Doctor. Uh, so it is nice to see that one. I really enjoy it a lot. If for some reason I wasn't allowed to include it, I'd probably say the special edition of Enlightenment because I do like Enlightenment and I, li I love the updated effects for it. A lot of those shots of the ships have a, has a very cinematic look that I really like. Uh, season 21, it's got to be Caves. I mean, I've called Caves overrated before and I think it is, but it is still a masterpiece. It is still the best, se the best story in season 21. Uh, don't get me wrong, Resurrection is also in the runnings. I love Resurrection of the Daleks, but it's, it's got to be caves. got to be. Season 22, I'm going to say Vengeance on Veros. Uh, I think, you know, uh, Revelation of the Daleks should get a name drop, although I haven't seen it probably in 12 or 13 years. I need a refresher on it, but I do remember enjoying it. But Vengeance is the one Colin Baker story uh, from his TV era that I can always point to and go, that one is actually really good. Not just passable, not just good for the era, but really good. I really enjoyed that one. Aside from the whole Perry Bird thing, that's really the only weird nitpick in it. The rest of it I like. Season 23, I'm going to say Mysterious Planet. Shout out to Terror of the Vervoids, but I really like Mysterious Planet, especially the incidental music. I like the incidental music in that one, and I love Glitz. I always love Glitz. Solomon Glitz is just a cool character. I always like him. Tony did such a good job playing him. Uh, so I really like Mysterious Planet. Season 24 is basically a toss-up between Paradise Towers and Dragonfire. I could just flip a coin. Whichever one I grabbed, I would be happy with. Today, I would probably say Paradise Towers, but if I grabbed Dragonfire by mistake, I'd be fine. Either of those two would be fine. Season 25, I'm going to say Remembrance of the Daleks. A story I still think is a little overrated and is a little pantomime in places, which, to be fair, does happen a lot in the McCoy era. Um, 
But it is a good story. I do think it is the best of season 25. Season 26 is tricky because all four of the stories in season 26 are great. I'm going to say Curse of Fenric, though. I do consider it essential Doctor Who viewing. I think it is McCoy's most essential story if you really want to get a feel of his Doctor. Um, and it's just fun viewing. It really is. The stakes feel really high in that one. You really feel like there's just a lot going on in it, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. And with McGann, it's kind of odd because you never quite know if people consider McGann a classic doctor or a modern doctor. Quite frankly, I consider him both. I think he's a classic doctor and a modern doctor. He's that nice little bridge between them. So if I had time, I would grab the TV movie and toss it in there as well because while the TV movie is flawed, I do think it's fantastic and I always thoroughly enjoy it. So that is the story I would pick from each season of Classic Doctor Who if I could only pick one. I want to know what you think of my list and my reasoning, and I'd like to know the ones you would pick. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Other things to do while I have you here. I have a Patreon. If you like what I do and want to support what I do, there is a link to that down in the description as well. I want to give a shout out to two of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane and The Fifth Doctor. I do appreciate their continued support, and the support of all of my other patrons as well, Trevor, Alice, J. 